We got some more jogging for now. We got Poland this time. Really excited to check this one out. Let's go, man. All right, we've reached Poland. Europe's, uh, how can I put this? Poland knows how to take a hit. It's like. <laughs> 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 They get hit by everyone. Is that all you got? I'm not even breaking a sweat. It's I'm not gonna laugh when I wasn't gonna stop them. No! By the way, this is my buddy Art. He's half Polish. Uh, Art, do you know anything about Poland? I know. How nothing. many friends does baby? <laughs> How many friends does he have, bro? I'm not Poland, but I know my last name means on Friday. He knows someone from every country, so wait, I swear. Wait, I have another Polish friend named Conrad who's actually also going to be in this episode. He's of course Polish you do. Speaks Polish. Hey, f that guy. Well, uh, Art, you can also play Poland in the skits and stuff in this episode. Is that cool? Yeah, I guess so. All right, cool. Anyway, hey, everybody. I'm your host, Barbs. Welcome to the Wolverine of Europe. The Poles oh, know how to... I called him Baby. <laughs> yeah, his name's Bobby. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. I'm dyslexic, to be fair, so, you know. To deal with calamity, and if there was ever a Easy mutant apocalypse, you would probably want one on your team. In any case, let's begin. How to piss off a Polish person one on one. Oh man, I just visited Poland. I sure loved that Eastern European country. It's Central! Central European! Yeah, they don't like Why is this episode Eastern so Europe, aggressive? Even though, I mean, come on, they're kind of more on the eastern side of the continent. And it's. Okay, okay, Central, <laughs> Central, Central European, Central. The country is located in Central Europe and bordered by seven other countries. Keep in mind, this little guy right here is a detached exclave of Russia called Kaliningrad. Speaking of which, we already mentioned uh, this in the Germany Eastern. episode, but Poland shares an island called Uzedom or Uz with Germany in this lagoon. The borders follow some natural boundaries like rivers and mountains. However, most of them were agreed upon after war times. The country is divided into 16 voivodeships or provinces. The capital Voivode and the what? city of the country, Warsaw, in the center. It also holds the busiest airport, Warsaw International. From there, the second largest city is Krakow, known as the medieval capital down south. And it holds the second wow. largest airport, John Paul II Krakow International. And rounding out for third place is the city of Łódź, which means boat, nearly in the center of the whole country. Nonetheless, the city of Gdansk holds the third largest airport, Gdansk International, and also the busiest shipping port located on the Baltic Sea, where much of the cargo comes into the country. Otherwise, their entire sea access is... Oh my god, do we not... <laughs> I don't think we normally go into this much detail about our country, do we? ...confined to the coastline, they do not own we any distant every in the Baltic. Due to the general flat landscape making much of the north and central parts, Poland is a bustling transport hub with numerous roadways that traverse every single corner into oh. every neighboring nation. Since joining the EU, nearly 2 billion euros have been invested in Poland's rail lines and oh, high-speed lines are being constructed today. Poland doesn't have any autonomous areas, but if we had to discuss historical and cultural regions, many people may just refer to this general area as Masuria, sometimes even historical Prussia. This general area is right. Pomerania. That's right, same as the dog, which is where it comes from. And the coastal area oh, is... Oh, shit, yeah, I used to have a fucking Pomerania. What the hell? Chubia, where the Kashubians are mostly found. There's is greater it just Poland, loads of Pomeranians Poland, there? which at the very border has Ruthenia or Red Ruthenia. Parts of the south are considered Silesia, which are inhabited by peoples that have their own distinct culture apart from the Polish. It's all kind of confusing, and we'll talk more about it later. One thing you have to understand is that historically, Poland had a lot of different types of administration administrative divisions, and much of it was shaped by war. Sometimes they had more land, other times they had less, and for 123 years, they kind of disappeared altogether. Here's the Russia! Russia! Austria! Well, actually, they almost completely disappeared. I mean, Krakow was technically a free city state for about 30 years. And keep in mind, we mentioned this in the Lithuania episode, but if you want to be incredibly technical, historically, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth had some colonies. Way back yeehaw, when they thought one island in the Gambia, as well as Trinidad and Tobago, would be good overseas investments, making them the only sites that the Polish had colonized outside of Europe then what happened in the end it was too hard for them to manage and they sold them off the end <laughs> So anyway, wow. here's some places of interest you guys, the Polish geography, suggested we mention this episode They have quite a few UNESCO heritage sites a lot right. of them we got the wooden oh, do, Wait, 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 geography now just in case I don't think we got any right now, but normally they put images top Yeah, uh, I'm gonna put my camera down here. We got the wooden Toskvaz Sentinel Hall Moscow pot oh that was it and castle of Teutonic order are like chapels cool. the holy mountain of Gabarka, the painted what village of Zalipe, Chopin's heart, this rock city, the upside down house, Kosciuszko Mound, the carrot bro, bro, house, bro, bro, the yeah, 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 yeah. why do we have a uh, Zalipe, Chopin's heart? Why is this called Chopin's why is that called heart? Um this was really cool. This rock city, the upside down Why do we have an upside down? <laughs> Why? Why do we have an upside down house? 
townhouse, Kosciuszko Mound. Uh, that looks good. The Carrot House, the world's most narrow house. Tons of cool statues and monuments like these. The world's tallest Pope statue. Tons of World War II sites. It's kind of what they're known for. Right. The most famous one probably being the Auschwitz concentration camp. Right. Of course, there are way too many churches like these. This one was where all the former kings were coronated. And of course, there's Warsaw's St. John's Cathedral. There's a bunch of synagogues that actually survived World War II. Oh, shit. There's even a wooden mosque for the Tatar minority in Krushinyani. There's so many museums and galleries. Here's a bunch of notable ones. And too many castles, but they're very oh, proud my of God, that's the like a Disney castle. castle in Melbourne. Yeah, Poland does not fall short when it comes to sights to see, or things to do, or nature to explore. And that means we move on to the next segment. The... It is said that the name Poland comes from Polani, which means people living in open fields. Poland is not all flat so and not flat? all plains. There's much more to it than you think. Poland is generally divided into five physical regions. The coast, the lake lands, the Polish plain, the Polish uplands, and the mountain regions. Much of Poland's coast along the Baltic Sea is straight until you hit the east and you get these interesting natural formations called spits. We've already talked about them in the Lithuania episode, but basically, spits are thin, narrow sandbanks that divide the sea from another body of water, creating saltwater lagoons. Lagoons, the largest one being the Bay of Puck, the what? Szczecin, and the Vistula Lagoon, shared with Russia's Kaliningrad exclave. Much of the country inland lies on the flat Polish plain, part of the Greater North European plain, a huge open flat segment of Central Europe that extends across multiple countries. Many people say that this is both the blessing and curse of Poland, because although a third of the country is forested, this one being the largest national park, and about a third is arable, making them a powerhouse contributor to Europe's agriculture sector, it did kind of make it easy for outside forces to enter and invade, with little or no right. natural obstacles barricading the interior of the country anyway within this we all know when it comes to war but especially back in the day right or even now to be fair if it's flat land it's easy for the uh you know people invading it, you know that's why switzerland does so well it's just covered by mountains nobody wants to go there. in many rivers like the notek the Varta, and the longest river the vistula meander through the fertile valleys passing through many important cities like warsaw in the north side you have two massive lake districts the pomeranian and the larger masurian which also holds the largest lake of the country like Schniadwe. the further south you go the higher the elevation gets until you hit the poland uplands a little further south on the border with the czech republic and slovakia you find the two main and largest mountain chains, the Sudets and the Beskids, which form the north part of the larger famous Carpathian mountain chain. Here you why, why are mountains always on borders? Like, I've noticed this with most countries. Mountains are on the border between other countries. Also find the tallest peak, Mount Rese, right on the border of Slovakia. All right, and that just about does it. Now I need my triple shot of espresso break. Do you reckon and when they were splitting the countries, they thought about that? The physical geography section. What do you want? They was like, ah, we don't, you know, we really can't do anything about the mountains, so let's just half it in the uh, middle of this. What do you say, Barbie? The next thing on the teleprompter. Now, as you can see, by this point, Poland has a lot more than just flat plains and lakes. They even have moving sand dunes in the north and a small huh? desert in Boindu which literally translates to mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> Poland, deserts. you never think those two would go together, right? Oh, and there's also a crooked forest made up of trees that bend at a 90 degree angle. Many people have theories as to how it got that way. Some say it's natural. Some say it was a dude trying to make chairs. In any case, Poland is a major Wait, producer of apples fuck? in the world, as well as being the world's largest treacle. Treacle? What the heck is treacle? Yeah, and what is amber, treacle? amber exporter. <laughs> I don't even know amber is either. What is that? Petrified tree sap? <laughs> It actually is. It is. Whoa. <laughs> Today, though, Poland's economy wow. is now mainly driven by the service. Wait, isn't this guy Polish? And he's pretty much saying, what the fuck is this shit that's in Poland? Sector and industry with main products like machinery and cars, buses, and video games being their largest export. Anyway, Poland. Poland also has quite a few endemic animal species like storks, Eurasian lynx, roe deer, and they have one of the largest populations of the rare European bison, which, have you guys ever had a bison burger? I mean, that's like really good. All right, don't eat those. Those are endangered. And bears. In fact, a bear once served in the Polish I've never had army, one. and there's a statue dead dedicated to him. Look it up, Aww. old boy tech. Anyway, time to finish up with food. Some of the top Polish dishes, you guys, the Polish oh, I'm geography. I'm actually hungry, peeps. please. That. Geogra That's what I call them, Art. Suggested we mention include things like bigosh, cabbage rolls, galanka pork knuckle, roasted <laughs> duck served with honey and apples. So many soups like these. But the national dish being sour rye soup. And of course, the most popular dishes many people have heard of, pierogi, kielbasa, kavanos, and Krakow style sausage. And bagels. Yes, oh. bagels originated from Stop. Poland, from the Polish Jews. 
not New York. But they did move to New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, you cannot talk about Poland without mentioning vodka. Some say it was invented in Poland, some say the Polish just make really good vodka, but either way, vodka usually takes up a huge section in most Polish grocery stores. I've seen this guy in vodka. <laughs> no, no, you haven't. That was not Greek whiskey, and we don't talk about that here. Polish people know what they like. They're a distinct people. Speaking of which, we now move on to... Thank you, Art. Thanks. Can I do, like, one of those special effect outros, like, you yeah. know, Wolverine theme? Can I have the claws sure. or something like that? Sure, yeah, go for it. Here. Okay. Oh, my God. Is it true if I kill you, I become you? Let's find out. Oh, my... Holy oh. edit. Oh. It does work. Now, some of you guys have told me, in Poland, there's kind of like a word that sums up the Polish mindset. Zawatwicz. It means something along the lines of accomplishing tasks and taking care of business. Half of everybody in Europe has probably at one point at least encountered a Pole. They're everywhere. Right, Working. yeah, true. Polish doctors in Germany, Polish contract workers in London, Polish bus drivers in Iceland. Work is they in are everywhere. Blood, and it's a huge part of who they are. The population is about 40 million. However, keep in mind, diaspora-wise, there are about 20 million Poles living abroad, and they are oh, the second shit. largest Slavic group after Russians. The country is in incredibly homogenous with about 96% of the population claiming to be Polish, which is part of the Slavic family group. This makeup is mostly due to the Nazi intervention of World War II and Soviet relocation policies of the 20th century that drastically changed the previously diverse population. The country has few minority groups, however, of the minorities, the largest groups would be the Silesian at about 1.3% and the Kashubians at just under 1%. The rest is mostly made up of other Europeans like Ukrainians, Belarusians, Czechs, and non-Europeans. They use the Polish Zwati as their currency. Cool. C, E, and F plug out. I just love how, like, colorful of other currencies are. Now, of course, the main language of Poland is, of course, Polish. Lots of people say Polish is, like, really hard to learn. For one, they have seven cases of speech and too many consonants that are smashed all together at once. Jogby Pavel says the Polish language is basically just spoken Wi-Fi passwords. Here's Conrad <laughs> with a Polish tongue twister. Sometimes even the Polish people say they have to polish up on their Polish. <laughs> whoa, 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 Otherwise, what Poland is kind of a sociological anomaly. Even though they are Slavic, it's kind of like the easternmost extent of Latin influence, which explains why the majority at around 86% identify as either Catholic or, in the very least, nominally Catholic, varying degrees of devotion. Catholicism plays a huge role in Polish culture. They even have a channel dedicated to the Pope on TV. Politically, Poland is usually a more... Wait, right. They, they got a channel dedicated to the Pope on TV, right? But, like, you go to the channel, and what is that exactly going to be playing? Do you know what I mean? Like, he's, the Pope is not going to be on TV 24-7 of nation that holds to its so it's roots, just like, and even though they're part of the EU, shit, they usually repeat, do not let anyone that he's tell them how they should run things in their own country. It's their home, their rules. It's like, all right, so it's settled. Uh, what do you think of this proposal for the union, guys? I hate it. Now, Poland, <laughs> you're a key player. We need you to like this. I still hate it. <laughs> come on, Poland, <laughs> don't be stubborn. Oh, really, Germany? You want to come back to Poland again and tell us how to do things around here? Do you remember what happened last time? Oh, my. Are you really going to play this card again? I always will. Well, a little exaggerated, but yeah, don't push the Polish. They've gone through tons of that. I mean, yeah. literally like a fifth of their right. population died during World War II, the majority of whom were Polish Jews. Often in tight-knit Yiddish-speaking communities, Poland had one of the highest populations of Jews prior to World War II, and at one point, up to 10%. They played a huge historical role oh in my what God. was and would be. Poles are proud that they were the only European-occupied country to never collaborate with the Nazis. They never officially surrendered, and all those years the Nazis were there, the underground army kept fighting. Poles have an incredibly complex history. I mean, they had a weird electoral monarchy thing? Conrad, explain. So the royal elections of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth became a thing after the death of the last Igelonian on the Polish throne. And at his death, it was decided that there would not be a royal dynasty that would just continue from generation to generation. That is to say that they would elect a king from a royal dynasty in Europe. But after his death, they would once again elect another monarch instead of letting his children take over the Polish throne. Thank oh, you, shit. Conrad. Taking all that heavy stuff in, Polish people have told me there's always kind of like this sense of somber, stoic, suspicious, cynical, yet productive and prudent mentality that encapsulates the Polish. It's a weird paradox when you see them because it's like... Ugh, being Polish is the worst, seriously. I know, right? I hate Polish sausages, they're so gross. They are, and the government is just totally whack. Yeah, yeah. Poland is terrible. What did you f***ing say? You can't say uh, that! You're not from uh, here! Yeah! Well, that took a little longer than expected, so uh, here's Hannah with culture stuff. I think that's my favorite scene so far. Oh. 
good to be back. Polish people have gone through a lot. They were pretty much fought for and invaded over 40 times for about 400 years. Nonetheless, Jesus Christ. Polish people held through those centuries and retained their sense of identity. For one, in Poland, it is actually just as popular, if not maybe even more, to celebrate one's name day as well as your birthday. Poland has quite a high level of Celebrate your name day as well as your birthday as well. But isn't your name day your birthday? Tertiary educated individuals with about 80% of the young adult population having enrolled in a university. Oh, also, duh. side note, the 35% of Polish people living abroad are referred to as Polonia. There's a contest where we figure out who is the strongest man in the world, and Poland has won the most of those contests. Okay, that's Today, strong. we have the Silesian and the with the Polish. minorities. Let's let Conrad explain this one because, you know... It's a little complex. The Silesians, who live for the most part today in Upper Silesia, are an ethnographic group with a distinctive dialect of Polish. Internationally, though, it's considered not as a nation or people, though some within the region consider themselves as a nation, which the Kashubians are, and they are considered as a West Slavic people separate from the Polish people. They are loyal towards Poland, but they have their own uh, recognized uh, minority status, they have their own traditions, they have their own cuisine and they have their own language. There are even bilingual signs, which um, Paul will definitely put in now. Thank you, Conrad. They've Cheers, also Conrad. wrapped up quite a few Nobel Peace Prizes at 17. They are front runners of innovations and inventions like kerosene and the kerosene lamp, the oil well, the bulletproof vest, and the modern drug test. A lot of festivals can be found year round throughout the country and in different regions. Popular ones include All Saints Day, May Day, the La Cognac Festival in Krakow, and during Christmas, you might see the creepy Turon everywhere. Why are you seeing that on Christmas? Festival in Krakow, and during Christmas, you might see the creepy. Why? Everywhere. To expound. Br that does not look Christmassy. More on Polish music and arts here. You know, it's keep or whatever. Yeah! Music in Poland goes way back to its ancient Slavic roots. Instruments typically used include things like the wood horn, the hurdy gurdy, the horse hair drum, the pedal accordion, and the suka. What you call me? Even though he had spent most of his time in France, Chopin was born in Poland. His homeland was always one of the central themes to his often somber and melancholy masterpieces cherished worldwide. During the Polish National Revival, this dude, this way, this dude, collected varieties of folk music for broadcast, including the most famous ones, these which are still performed to this day. I know that uh, there's this guitar player named uh, Jakub Zaczewski, you know and he is amazing. Thank you, uh, Keith. Yeah, he knows him. He knows him. And now the most complicated part him. of history. In the quickest way I can condense it, Slavic tribes and states in the Vistula Basin, Piast Dynasty, Greater Poland, Christianity and tribal unification, Pomerania is annexed, this dude becomes the first king, feudal disintegration, Mongols invade, Czechs invade, Teutonic Knights invade, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Swedes invade, Prussians invade, end of the Commonwealth. Con is there a country that the Mongols did not invade? Constitution written, Napoleonic Wars, Kingdom of Poland and Free State of Krakow, Russian partitions in Russian Poland, World War I, Polish-Soviet War, Independence from Russia, Germany invades, World War II begins, Communism years, Independence, weird West Germany stuff, some other interesting things like they got a Pope and a Nobel Peace Prize, first fully free elections, they joined NATO and the EU, and here we are today! Some people, you guys, the Polish geography people suggested we mention in this episode include all those dukes and kings, pretty much any hero that fought with the winged hussars, Copernicus, although he was technically German, Marie Curie was actually Polish. Mikołaj Rai, Pope John Paul II, all these athletes, yeah, these directors. Yeah, yeah. the World Rai, Cup Pope is going John on right now, so uh, yeah, everyone's got his eyes on uh, Louis Lewandowski. Paul II, all these athletes, these directors, all these artists and musicians, the dude from the movie The Pianist was a real guy, these American revolutionaries, and speaking of Americans, John Krasinski, Kristen Bell, Steve Carell, and Roman Polanski are also Steve Carell's Polish? Oh my god. I would have never guessed that. Don't know who Kristen Bell is. I know John. Uh, I, d I don't think I know Roman. Yeah, I would. Holy shit. So part Polish. Apple co founder oh, Steve part Wozniak. Polish. And finally, of course, Dragos Brenczykiewicz. And there's a lot more I could have mentioned, but that would take way too long. There's a lot of famous Poles all over the world. They've left their global mark. And speaking of global marks, that brings us to. 
As a central player in Europe for a long, complicated history, it's no surprise Poland has picked up quite an entourage over many, many years of Polish existence. For one, as part of the Visegrad group, the Czechs and Slovaks are generally considered the close West Slavic brothers. They've had very few wars and conflicts with them. They understand their languages, kind of. However, they both kind of think the other sounds funny when they talk. For right. Russians, it's more of like a people versus government thing. As people, Poles and Russians get along quite well on a human level. It's just the governments yeah. that often disagree and clash. Okay. Poland for a while was under the Iron Curtain and Warsaw Pact, which complicated things even more. But as crazy as things get, there is always kind of like this universal Slavic understanding. I don't think the Russian government guy with many, you know, governments. Friend. Ukrainians love to come to Poland for work. There is also a fast-growing Ukrainian community, and they kind of share a similar post-communist struggle alliance, although they still kind of don't like how Ukrainians honor the UPA, which is a whole other story. Poland is kind of like Germany's biggest regret that they have to constantly be reminded of literally every day as they are neighbors, but they are the largest economic partner for them as well. Germany does have many bilateral relations with Poland. It's the 21st century. People have grown up and moved on. Right. And the future looks bright mostly between the two. Quick note, Lithuania is like the divorced wife that they remember having some of the best years of their history with. Today, when a Pole meets a Lithuanian, they just kind of nod and smile, understanding everything the other is thinking without a single word. Their best friend, however, every Pole has told me <laughs> the same thing, Hungary. Historically, they've shared some of the same monarchs, heroes. They've always helped each other in times of need. There are many parks and monuments commemorating the friendship between the two. There's even a saying Aww. in Polish, two brothers, both to the saber and the bottle. In conclusion, let's get this to Conrad. Okay. Conrad, what do you have to say? Poland is a country that has a lot to offer, both geographically and has been through pretty much everything historically. It's been an empire, it's been completely erased from the map, and today Poland is a growing and thriving country. I'm sure that yeah, it's got Poland on the European scene will only grow. Thank you, Conrad, and thank you, Art, for being in this episode. Stay tuned. Portugal is coming up next, guys. There we go, Poland. Really good video. Really enjoyed that one. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.